you fly electric radio controlled, you're probably familiar with a lithium battery. But what you may not be familiar with is the lithium battery fire. And anybody who's had one of these lithium batteries go up in flames will tell you, it's no joke. I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IV Crazy from Video Aerial Systems, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a fireproof battery box for your LiPo batteries. So you're going to need a few items, first of which is a metal toolbox or ammo box. The other thing is a sheet of half inch drywall. This is a two by two panel I got at my local hardware store for $4. It's cheap and it's fireproof for up to three hours, which is more than enough time to contain a lipo fire. You're also going to need some polyurethane glue. In my case, I'm just using Gorilla Glue. And then you're going to need a water-based glue to mix with it. This glue will foam up and fill in all the cracks for the drywall, keeping, making sure that any fire doesn't escape into other areas. You're also going to need some kind of mixing cups. Any disposable cup works, but I found these epoxy mixing cups work really well. And once it foams up, you can simply squeeze the cup and remove the foam and reuse the cup. You're also going to need some kind of stirring device. Popsicle sticks, or craft sticks as they're often called, work great. You're also going to need a knife and a pen to draw your lines. Now you might be asking yourself, well, isn't an ammo in box more than enough? Well, no, in fact, it's not. You see, when a lithium battery catches fire, the heat has to go somewhere, and metal boxes are excellent at absorbing heat, which means if it's near anything flammable, chances are the box will still get hot enough to burn down whatever's nearby, even though there might not be any flames coming out. So you're still gonna need the drywall to insulate it. And with that, I'll show you how to build the box. I'm using a tape measure here, but you can use just the toolbox itself as the internal and external dimensions are fairly close. You'll want to open the toolbox and check to be sure that the rails inside that hold the upper drawer aren't too big, because these will make it difficult to slide the base plate in. You're going to want to make the base plate a little bit shorter than the bottom of the toolbox to make sure it fits inside. My toolbox is nine and a half inches deep. So I'm just gonna use my tape measure to measure nine and a half inches on either side of the drywall and then make a mark. Now I'll take a straight edge to mark my line all the way across at nine and a half inches. To cut this, you make three light cuts. Don't drive the knife in too hard, otherwise the cut won't be very, very clean. Drywall snaps fairly easily, and once it snaps, just fold it over to the back side and then drag the knife over the remaining paper, and it should snap off fairly cleanly. You'll want to cut the drywall in full sections like this instead of cutting the exact contour of the box because it'll just make it very, very difficult to cut all the way through the drywall, and it's much easier to just snap it. I'm cutting the base plate one inch shorter than the box is long as I intend to slide the two side panels on the sides of the box, which are one half inch thick, on either side. So I'm only measuring out to 19 and one quarter inches here, even though my box measures 20 and one quarter inch. Again, three slices, snap it, then flip it over backwards and cut the back side off. Now to test fit our panel. You can see that even though I took one inch off of the size of the base plate, it's still a very tight fit in the box, and it's leaving me a half inch on either side so that I can slide in a side panel. Of course, the front and back panels will rest on top of the base plate. I've decided to make the walls three inches tall, as a battery is approximately one inch thick and I want to have two layers plus a little bit of air space. Thus, I'm cutting my side panels three and one half inch. This is because I must make up the extra one half inch of base plate that is not there on either side. Now for the front and back firewalls. These will be three inches tall as they rest on top of the base plate. I decided to be a little bit lazy here and just use my straight edge as a knife guide instead of following my line. Either way you want to do it works just fine. I will need two of these panels, one for the front and one for the back. 
These panels also need to be trimmed for length. Because my battery box is 20 and one quarter inch, and I'll be taking up one half inch on either side of these panels, these panels must be cut down to 19 and one quarter inches. They should make a fairly tight fit in the battery box. Now we'll go ahead and dry fit all of our panels to the box. These don't need to be super tight. In fact, the loose is just fine. The glue we use will expand to six to seven times its original size and fill any gaps. So just make sure it's in there somewhat snug and that will be good enough. Over time, drywall tends to crumble and crack if exposed to repeated impact and damage. And thus, I'm using two pieces of clear packaging tape over the end that will be exposed to the elements and damage from put placing the batteries in and out of it. Then I just trim the packaging tape over the off of the sides. This will keep the, the drywall from getting damaged. I'll leave the bottom exposed as this is going to be coated thoroughly in glue and I don't want to affect the glue's ability to adhere to the base plate. Now it's time for our glue mixture. The glue mixture is two parts urethane glue to one part water-based white glue. Be sure to stir this up thoroughly as you want the glues to be thoroughly mixed. You have approximately 90 seconds to work with this before it expands to the point where it's not usable, so work quickly. I'm putting in a few extra supports around the inside of the battery box to make multiple battery bays as I tend to carry a large number of lipos with me. And it would really suck if one battery went up and took out every single battery in the box. You'll note that I'm not caking the glue on too heavily here. That's because the glue tends to expand to six to seven times its original size and will end up filling all the voids and then flaring out into the battery box itself. The less glue I use, the less glue I have to clean up afterwards. You'll also notice that as I work, this glue is beginning to thicken up on me. It's becoming much and much harder to work with. I only found I could get three boards in before I had to go with another batch of glue. Again, you have very little work time. When this stuff gets on your hands, it's very difficult to get off because water does not wash it off. So you might want to use gloves. To test the effectiveness of the drywall, I made a mock-up box cutting up some of the scraps left over from the project. I'm filling the box full of paper towels to absorb the gasoline which I'm dumping in. This is two-stroke gas which has a little bit of oil in it, so I'm hoping it will burn hotter. I don't want to pour too much in as the drywall will absorb it. I want only the paper towels to absorb it. There's a fine line between crazy and stupid. Crazy is lighting this thing on fire by hand. Stupid is doing it without a fire extinguisher handy. Okay, at arm's reach, here we go. As you can see, the fire is burning quite hot and the blowing wind is blowing it outside of the battery box, so perhaps I should have used a windshield of some sort. You probably noticed the cardboard box underneath the firebox. That is there to make sure that the fire doesn't get hot enough to actually burn something down when this is inside your house. After about a minute and a half, the box looks like this. As you can see, it's starting to get black with char and the fire is still raging. You can see the wind is blowing the flames over the side, but it isn't enough to damage the cardboard box. Remember how I said there's a fine line between crazy and stupid? For the sake of science, I'm crossing it. After the box has been burning for a good seven minutes, I decide to grab it to see how hot it actually is. While it is quite warm to the touch, it is not burning me. I need to be careful here because I don't want to dump out the flaming contents onto the flammable box below. This is the point where I should tell you please don't try this at home, unless you're a professional, in which case go for it. The fire burned for a full 10 minutes, a lot longer than I actually expected. So when it was almost out, I decided to touch the box and rotate it again. I noticed that it was a little bit warmer to the touch, but not hot. I could very comfortably handle it so long as it doesn't get too much hotter, but it's certainly not enough to melt plastic or burn the cardboard box below. After 12 minutes, the flame is finally extinguished, and I decide to dump out the contents and see what's inside. This is what the box looks like after 12 minutes of continuous fire. While it is charred, you will see that there are no places where the flame actually exited the box other than where the wind blew it over the top. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Please, be safe when handling LiPo batteries. 
And while I'd like you to build this box and protect yourself, I wouldn't advise building the mock box and setting it on fire with liquid gasoline in it. If you like this video, please click subscribe below if you haven't done so already. It's because of you, the viewers, that I make these videos. I'm Ivy Crazy, and thanks for watching.